Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, I'm Melissa Idris and I'm sitting in for Shirai Kutan today, Thursday the um, 9th of January. Welcome to BFM Morning Headlines. Instead of starting with what's in the papers, we're going to start with what's not in the papers. One of the biggest stories that came out um, yesterday was the fact that the Home Ministry had uh, deemed the coalition of Malaysian NGOs as um, illegal, as an illegal entity because they weren't registered with the Registrar of Societies and, quote unquote, they are not based on Islamic teachings. So what this means is that out of the 54 organisations, only 15 are registered with the Registrar of Societies. Also, these NGOs mainly champion or are supportive of um, gay rights or, or LGBT rights and um, freedom of religion for Malaysia. So that, in the eyes of the Home Ministry, means you are an outlaw or your organisation is an outlaw. But what did make the papers today, with the Harian for one, is this Simbang Internet Haram. Interesting because the leader of Iran, Ayatollah Al Khamenei, he's come up with a few fatwas. He said that any excessive interaction on the internet or social media between men and women who aren't related or bukan mahram um, is considered haram in his eyes because it could lead to vice or maksiat. Now, the uh, Mufti of Penang and the Mufti of Pahang, they've both come out to support this. What's interesting is the Ayatollah is a Shiite cleric and in Malaysia, Shia teachings are considered deviant. So it doesn't jive that they are supporting um, a fatwa by the Ayatollah. And anyway, on the internet, how sure are you that you know the person you're talking to is really the person you're talking to or if he or she is really a man or a woman? It's kind of you know grey area on the internet. Um, and it will give new meaning to poking someone on Facebook. So that's something to think about. Uh, moving on, we have the Sun that is still on the Jais raid and the Bible issue. They're asking the question, was the Jais raid a breach? Now, the Selangor government wants the federal government to decide on whether Jais actually breached the 10-point uh, agreement that the cabinet had decided on the use of the word Allah. So the Menteri Besar is saying that, look, Jais, you can um, go to the Home Ministry and find out whether everything is in order, find out what they seem to think on the matter and if they think that the Bibles are all in order, then you have to return the Bibles to the Bible Society of Malaysia. Personally, I'm not sure what's going to happen because so far, the federal government has been kind of quiet or silent um, on the matter and that has been deafening. Um, but let's see whether they stand by their 10-point agreement or they go the other way. It'll be interesting to see. Moving on to Utusan, they're not happy with the Selangor government clearly because they're asking Apa motif kerajaan Selangor? Now, they're not happy because Jais now has to get clearance from MAIS and the state EXCO before conducting any searches on places of worship. So, Utusan asking that big question, what is your motive, Selangor government? The Malay Mail is giving space again to this story on the foreign workers' ban on the service industry. Did you know that it's only 350 per hour as uh, wages for the service industry. You only get 350 an hour and if you times that by 8 hours of work, that brings you to 28 ringgit. And that if you times that by 30 days, that means you don't get any holidays or weekends off, you only get 850, that's 850 bucks a month. That's below the poverty line of 900 ringgit. So 850 um, is the average salary of a fast food worker and that is the job that we want locals to have apparently according to the government. Why is that? Why do we want locals to have such low-end jobs? Aren't we tri striving to become a high-income nation? Anyway, just a small trivia. Back in 1988, um, I think Keith Cum the, uh, from the news desk had worked at McDonald's and he got one ringgit 80 cents. Can you imagine? Um, other angles that the Malay Mail covered, some outlet managers said that foreigners are easier to work with than Malaysians because Malaysians are quote-unquote pampered and choosy. So pampered and choosy, they rather work with foreign workers who are more hardworking than Malaysians apparently. Um, something to think about. The Star continues their abuse story yesterday with one that links it back to current public sentiment. Pressure of abuse. Um, apparently, experts 
of child abuse cases say that uh, it's the pressures of the rising cost of living that push parents to be abusive towards their children or their family members, so it's all leading to aggression. Can we make the link that the removal of subsidies or the higher cost of goods every day will lead to higher aggression in our family life? I mean, I don't know, I think it's a tenuous link, but what can really justify abuse? Nothing, right? Especially if we're talking about abuse of children who can't even defend themselves. Star, you know, you're trying to link it back, but it doesn't jive for me. NST has an exclusive on the cover, Crackdown on Gambling. They, uh, Farinaz wrote this story. This is about Bukit Aman Ready to Deploy, their special task force on organised crime, or Star Fox, as they've catchily called it, an all-out war on illegal gambling operations, especially in the Klang Valley, which they're going to start and then fan out to the rest of the nation. It's aptly codenamed Ops Dadu. I like that name. It's also complete with a uh, intimidating photo of men in combat gear and guns, so just to give illegal uh, gambling dens a little bit of a scare. There you go. Um, that's all we have for the morning headlines today. I'm Melissa Idris and I will catch you tomorrow. BFM 89.9